this notebook, we're going to have a look at disparate impact remover. The machine learning problem remains the same. We're going to try to predict whether or not an individual's income is above 50,000 US dollars. And the data for this machine learning problem is coming from the US Census Bureau. We start off by loading in and importing the libraries that we need for this problem. And once again, we have fork tables, which is going to be the API that will help us pull the data. We now also have a scale-on because we're actually going to perform model training once we've transformed the data. And then we can also see the AIF360 library, and this is what we're going to use to actually perform the data transformation. The first step will be to read in the data and we select a subset of the features that we're interested in from the census data set. And we use fork tables to set up our problem and import the data. And we're actually going to limit the data set that we get to two groups to create a binary grouping. And we're going to restrict the data set to group one and group eight. We're going to kick it off with the exploratory data analysis. And the first step here will be to look at the first five rows of the data set. And we can see here, everything's already in numerical format. There are some missing values that we need to deal with. We can also have a look at the shape of the data set. We see there are a lot of individual rows and we have 14 features in total. Keep in mind here that one of those will be our label. Dataframe.info will show us how many missing values we have. And we can see that there is only one column with missing values. And now we're going to split between categorical and numerical features because eventually we'll have to prepare them in different ways. To make sure that we're really treating categorical features as categorical features, we're also casting them as object type and we're also recasting our numerical features to integer values. And once again, we can check with dataframe.info to make sure that the data type change did actually take effect. Finally, we want to make sure that the model target is not accidentally ending up in the model features. So here we're performing a quick check. And now we need to start dealing with the missing values. We can see here that one of our columns does in fact contain quite a lot of missing values. But before we actually implement a filling or removal of the missing values, we can also plot and analyze some of the other features in more detail. One important analysis is always going to be the target distribution here, so we can plot our outcome. And in fact, we can see that it's not particularly skewed. Next, we can look at the feature distribution. And here we're going to use the short list of features that we created earlier, because we notice actually that some of the features contain many distinct categories and then plotting those could actually crash the working environment that we're in. So we want to restrict what we plot to only those features where we have a small number of distinct categories. Next, we're going to select the features to actually build the model. And in fact, the one feature that contained a lot of missing values is also a feature that we don't particularly want to have in our data set anyway. So we decide to go ahead and remove it. At this point now, we have all of our features that we want to proceed with. So this is the point where we can perform the transformation using the DI remover. How can we use the DI remover? Well, first of all, we need to take our data frame and specify what the labels are, what the protected attributes are, what the favorable outcome and what the unfavorable outcome is. Next, we need to decide what the repair level is that we want to go for. And then we call fit transform. 
So now we can look at the transformed version of the data set. And we can see here, we can in fact compare it to the original version of our data set. And we can see that the data transformation did take effect. So for example, if you were to focus on the age column, you would notice that the third entry changed from 65 to 63. So in fact, the numerical values were adjusted according to the DI remover and the repair level that we set. One more thing that we can calculate here is actually the DI metric itself. And to do that, we also need to specify what the privileged group and what the unprivileged group is. Here, so if we want to look at the DI value, we can call the dataset metric. We provide the dataset that we have. We specify what the unprivileged and what the privileged group is, and then we call dot disparate impact. And in fact, we're going to do it twice here. We're going to do it on the transformed version of the data set and on the original version of the data set. And this is to show you that the values actually shouldn't change because keep in mind, the disparate impact metric looks at the ratios of the favorable outcomes in the different subgroups. So the outcomes, obviously, those are the labels and we're not actually transforming the labels. So that means no matter which of the two data sets we use, the transformed or the original version, the DI value should not change. What will change, however, is the DI value after we've trained the model with the transformed data. Next here we have our train validation and test split. And finally, we have our standard data processing with pipeline and column transformer. And the model that we want to use in this example is going to be the logistic regression. So here we're putting everything together. And you can see the final pipeline. And now we can go ahead and start with the model training. We can see that we get a validation accuracy of 0.82. And we can also check on our test split. In this particular example, we actually didn't do any tuning. So we would expect that the test performance and validation performance would be very similar. And in fact, we can also see that represented here. To wrap it up, we're going to look at the distribution of the different outcomes and also the predictions that we made. So once again, we need to create a binary label data set. So what we want to calculate here is the DI value. And for the dot disparate impact command to work, we actually need to cast it in this particular binary label data set metric, which takes as one of the inputs the binary label data set. Obviously, you could also just implement the equation yourself from scratch, and then you would not need to cast the data set in this particular way. What we should notice here, though, is now that we actually trained the model with the transformed version of the data, the disparate impact metric is lower than where we started off with. So if you remember, we had value around 0.4, and now we're at 0.25. And we're going to wrap it up by plotting the distribution of the targets and the predictions. So in the first graph, we have the target. In the second graph, we have the predictions. And even visually, we can see that they are different. This is the end of our disparate impact notebook.